Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to create a repository which you can use with a natural. Um, this used to be, up until yesterday, this was really complicated, which is why um, which is why I'm only just recording this video like a week or two later after I recorded all the other ones, uh, because it was like, this is just far too complicated to try to run, explain to people, um, and expect people to be able to do uh, independently. Uh, so let's, uh, so now it's all automated, let's hop into it. So first we need to get over to our host to go and create the repository. So let's go and do that. So we're going to get onto GitHub. I'm just going to create a new repository. And we're going to call this Kev test 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, and that is fine, that is happy. Um, demonstrating creating a repository and related stuff. Good. Okay, so we have that. Uh, now notice here I'm going to initialize this repository with a re with a readme. Um, we don't need to pop in any of these things for now, but um, maybe you want to, it's up to you. Beautiful. Uh, let's go and create that repository. Okay, and now we have this. We just need to remember where that is. Uh, so let's hop over here and we're going to go uh, manage actual and we're just going to go repo list for a sec here. Okay, that's fine. It's a nice clean setup. Um, so manage, manage actual and you're going to see near about two thirds of the way down there is this um, repo creating using wizard. So we now want to uh, use that like so and this is going to talk a lot and the reason why it talks a lot is there's you need to sort of uh, choose these parameters carefully um, there's only about four or five of them which you need to go through they're uh, pretty easy once you know what they are so first off uh, the name and this here is a direct relationship with the name here it sort of sets up the naming for what we're going to know it as um, inside actual. Um, it's going to set up uh, the profile. Um, it's going to set up some defaults for um, the executable, all sorts of stuff like that. So this will all become more apparent as we go along. So we're going to paste that in there, fine. Now we want to uh, create a description. And here I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste in here. Um, also, this is stuff from the automation. Okay, and the reason why I'm doing that is I just want to demonstrate that what we're doing here, I'm going to show you when it gets over to here. Cool. Uh, so the exact name, this is the command, if, if you would like the uh, if you would like to basically create an application with this repository this is the command which you would use to ac actually execute that command so it used the name as the default there and I'm just going to accept that now here it has guessed um, where the repository URL is and so we actually go we can go here we can copy that and we can paste it in but just before we do you'll notice that it is actually guessed correctly um, what uh, what the repository URL is. And the way that it has guessed that is my username on the computer is the same as my username in the brow in, uh, in Git. So, excuse me, so it knows that part and then here we've actually said that we've got um, the same name that's being used here as um, up the top here. I can't see it. There it is. Um, is there and so therefore it guesses it all there so that's how it works it out um, it works for my situation it may not work for yours so just to use a little bit of care and if in doubt just simply paste whoops um, let's just grab that again there we go um, if in doubt just simply paste it in um, okay uh, now the dev folder I'm going to accept this. No, I'm not. I'm going to put in something. This here, it takes as your current directory. So if you um, if you started the wizard, um, so let's pop over here. Um, let's 
so if we are in this folder, um, let's just quickly do it. If I go manage, and we're just going to boink, and blah, blah, boink, boink, and notice that it is, it is detected that that's where we are. So we're just going to ignore that and come back over here. So actually, we will grab that folder, though. Um, OK, so we're just going to now paste that into here. So uh, yeah, we'll accept that. So what that folder is, that is where the repository is going to be cloned. And so if you were to install the application uh, directly uh, using web install or repo install or whatever, it would put that inside the .actual directory. Um, and it would end up in here. However, when you're actually developing something, you don't want to stick it in there. And the reason for that is uh, to test your application properly, you need to uninstall it, reinstall it a few times, just sort of make sure that the installation process works as expected. Um, therefore, you don't want to be removing the any work that you may not have finished committing or something like that. So. Uh, make sure that you have a development directory. Um, so in this case, we created documents and then develop uh, development. So that's where we've we've stuck that. So that's why that needs to be different. Um, we have set the um, we've set the name, uh, we've set the exec name, uh, we've set the repo URL, and we've set the description. Uh, I'm happy with all of that, so I'm going to say yes, whoopsie, uh, sorry, if we said no, it would go and ask us for them again, and notice that it defaults to whatever we entered before, so you can just hit enter and it will accept those, like so, and now it says oh, are you happy, and we're going to go yes, and so now here's the last chance to hit control C, um, yeah, before that point, nothing has changed on disk. Now things are starting to change on disk. Um, so you notice there's quite a lot of text going in here. It's explaining stuff that it is doing. Um, so uh, here it is talking about how it's backed up a file. It's told you what file it's backed up here. And then it's saying, well, hey, we've backed up old files. Um, and then this is why we're doing it. And then we come down. It keeps on doing stuff. Um, and then when it's finished, it tells us it's finished, and then it gives us these next steps. Uh, you notice here that it talks about pushing back to the repo. So let's go and have a look at what it's actually done there. So notice that it's checked out uh, the Kev test 2345 in here. Um, and we have some stuff inside it now. If we compare that to what the repository looks like here at the moment, even if we refresh this, you'll see it still just has the readme inside it. But over here, we don't have that yet because we haven't pushed it up. Now, you notice here, we've got a readme.md read um, here, and that one is now labeled .old. If we cat that, whoops, and you'll notice that is the same as it is over there. However, if we cat this one, um, and you'll notice now that it has taken what we put into the wizard. So you notice it's got the name there. Okay, well, the old one had that. It does have the description. Notice it has generated um, the one-liner which you would need to install it. So you don't even need to worry about that. It's all sorted out for you. So now this becomes your primary readme, and you can go and add all the story, the backstory about what your project is, and all this type of stuff. You can add that in here, and uh, it will just work. Uh, and then this one here, we can say, well, we don't want that anymore. Uh, well, actually, before we do, uh, let's just have a quick uh, look at what Git looks like. And you can see here that we've got two commits here. And um, you see this one here, where it's going and creating the details for the repository. And then this one here, where it's just sort of saying, well, hey, here's the backed up files. We can keep them if you want them, or we can get rid of them. So what we're going to do now is we're going to remove this, because, well, hey, we know we don't want it. Um, and I'm just going to go boink. Um, this is what I'm doing right here, initial setup. This is a convention which I'm doing. Um, I like it because it's effectively saying, hey, here's a group of tasks which I've done. I wanted to keep them logically separated. 
um, but I also want to sort of say, well, hey, these things are related together. So um, I sort of put here just sort of a vague, hey, it's to do with this, and that's what that's about. Um, removed um, obsolete files like that, and uh, there we go. So that's happened. Notice we also have a parameters.json. And that is uh, to do with the repo palms. I'm going to explain uh, what all that is about in another video. But this is this is the hard part. Um, so you don't need to worry about this unless you're doing something really non-standard. Um, notice that the docs folder has been created. Um, I'll just do that again. Uh, there's nothing in there at the moment, but this is where you'd go and put all the overview documentation, basically saying, well, hey, um, if you have a whole heap of packages and your packages available, um, which we don't at the moment, then documentation specific to those packages will go in there, whereas uh, documentation, which is an overview for the entire um, repository, will go in the docs folder here. What have I not told you? I think I've told you everything. Um, so, the next video that I'm going to record is explaining this repo palm stuff. Um, and if we just go um, uh, repo list, and you'll notice here that we've got, um, yeah, th this is this is the repo palms, and you can see this is the all the stuff that we entered into the wizard has gone into here, and it's. Um, it has defined uh, what packages are going to be used. There are two more things which I've forgotten to show you. Actually, one is you'll notice that the exec um, is already working. So uh, you can start uh, doing development directly in this development uh, directory here, and you can just start using it straight away. Notice, though, we have no packages at the moment. So if we pop into here, And we get into profiles and then kev, boink, like that, and then packages. Notice all of the packages in here are currently actual ones. There's no kev test 2345 packages, which means that um, we'd need to do manage actual repo reinstall kev test 2345. And we'd need to do that, and then once we've done that, uh, once we've done that, it would uh, then enable any packages in there, but because we don't have any, it's still going to not have any in there, so that's fine. The other thing that I wanted to quickly show you is, okay, so we've got uh, we've got these uh, commits here, but at the moment we won't see them in here, so let's go and uh, put them up there. Uh, I do a pull just out of convention just to make sure we have the latest thing. Okay, fine, and then we'll do a push. And now, if we go over here, you see we've got uh, the parameters.json, we've got the readme, um, we've got the one-liner. Notice, however, that we do not have the two folders. We don't have docs and we don't have packages available, and the reason for that is uh, that we've got no files inside these two folders. And uh, My understanding is that uh, Git is about tracking files, not about tracking folders. I could be wrong on that, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's uh, how it works. At least, that's the... Sorry, in these videos I forgot to tell you where the documentation is for all of the stuff. So, you can go to github.com, actual and then get into the docs folder, and then into programming, and then into creating a repository with profiles. And here is all of the stuff. <laughs> with the uh, different lighting, yeah, it's just, it's just brighter. A couple weeks later, it's so much brighter outside. Oh, um, <laughs> you can now see my room as a tip.